warships uncloaking. Coordinates? Hello and welcome to a new episode of RT Essentials. I'm Mark Ellis. It's time to talk about sci-fi, and while we are very aware of the countless amazing movies that fall under this wonderful genre, and we do love to celebrate those, today we're talking about science, fiction, television, or TV for short. There are some obvious classics that have paved the way for bigger and better series throughout the decades, all of which we're going to cover. And as budgets and expectations have grown exponentially, especially with the rise of streaming wars the past few years, great sci-fi TV offerings ain't going to slow down anytime soon. So please, come aboard the ship and strap yourself in. They say that in a lot of sci-fi TV shows, because we're headed to the vast world of the best science fiction television of all time. Stranger Things. And starting things off is one of the most popular sci-fi shows of the past five years, Stranger Things. The series was created by Matt and Ross Duffer, professionally known as the Duffer Brothers, who also serve as showrunners and executive producers. The series is set in the 1980s in the fictional town of Hawkins, Indiana, and centers around numerous supernatural events occurring around the town. Events that are connected to a hostile alternate reality called the Upside Down. Series stars include Winona Ryder, David Harbour, Millie Bobby Brown, Gaten Matarazzo, and Finn Wolfhard, who recorded his audition tape from his bed because he was sick. Before working on the series, the Duffer brothers were mentored by M. Night Shyamalan while writing for Wayward Pines, which Shyamalan executive produced. And when it came to this series, the Duffer brothers were looking to develop a series with a mix of investigative drama and supernatural elements, along with horror, science fiction, and childlike sensibilities I think they succeeded. Play this, you ugly piece of While shopping for a network, the Duffer Brothers prepared a 20-page pitch book to go along with a script that would essentially be similar to the series' first episode. At one point during development, the setting was Montauk, New York, and nearby Long Island, and the title was originally known as Montauk. The Duffers have also infused plenty of 1980s pop culture references in the series, inspired by the works of Steven Spielberg, John Carpenter, and Stephen King. In fact, the Hawkins police vehicles and uniforms are identical to those used in Jaws and Jaws 2. Stranger Things has garnered dozens of Emmy nominations and plenty of wins to go along with a die-hard and dedicated fan base. The series has spawned books, video games, theme park attractions, toys, and comic books. With four critically acclaimed seasons already under its belt, the series was renewed for a fifth and final season, hopefully coming soon. Star Trek The Next Generation. On screen. I'm Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Jean-Luc Picard, Captain of the Starship Enterprise Registry NCC-1701D. You will lower your shields and prepare to transport yourself aboard our vessel. Boldly going to the next spot on this list is Star Trek The Next Generation. This was the first live-action spin-off from the 1960s cult classic TV show and aired from September of 1987 to May of 1994, spanning 178 episodes over seven seasons. The series was created by Gene Roddenberry, who also created the original and was set a century after the events of that show. Next Generation featured a new crew with Patrick Stewart leading the way as Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Plus, there is a new Starship Enterprise, the NCC-1701D, for all you Trekkers keeping score out there. And Trekkies, don't want to leave anybody out in this segment. After the original series gained and kept more popularity following its original three-season run, Roddenberry responded with a short-lived animated series in the mid-1970s with the original cast returning before moving into making movies with them by 1979. By the mid-80s, Roddenberry became less involved with the films and shifted his focus to a new series in the franchise. After failing to land a full series commitment from a major network, Next Generation was released straight to syndication instead, a strategy that I'd say paid off. Klingon warships, armed and ready, sir. What shall it be, Tomalok? You will still not survive our assault. You will not survive ours. Shall we die together? The series became very popular and was a hit with critics right away. 
Their premiere was the first TV episode to be nominated for a Hugo Award, honoring great science fiction works since 1972, and the first season received Emmy nominations for six different episodes. The series had reached nearly 12 million viewers a week by its fifth season, with the series finale being watched by over 30 million viewers two years later. The success led to another new series, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, released in 1993. Plus, the Next Generation characters have since returned in four films over the years and the spin-off series Star Trek Picard in 2020. Star Trek The Next Generation, with five of seven seasons coming in hovering around 100% fresh on the tomato meter, also spawned numerous novels, comic books, and video games. And after ending its run with 19 Emmys, two Hugo Awards, five Saturn Awards, and a Peabody Award, I would say job well done. Doctor Who. It's like a special effect. Oi, ha, matchstick man. You're not. Compensating. We're not sure who's on first or if what's on second, but we do know that the next sci-fi series on this here list is Doctor Who. The series originally ran from 1963 to 1989, and after a failed TV movie reboot in 1996, an updated continuation of the series launched in 2005 and is still going strong. The series follows the adventures of a Time Lord who they called the Doctor, an extraterrestrial being who appeared to be human. The Doctor rides around the universe in a time-traveling spaceship called the TARDIS and, with the help of various friends, helps out people, takes on bad guys, and saves civilizations just another day's work. There's been over a dozen Doctors during its run, and that transition from one lead actor to another is written into the show with the concept of regeneration into a new incarnation. It's delusional. I, the calculations alone would take hundreds of years. Oh, hundreds and hundreds, but don't worry. I started a very long time ago. Warning the War Council of Gallifrey. This is the Doctor. You might say, I've been doing this all my lives. This plot device means that a Time Ward will transform into a new body when their current one is too badly harmed. In 2017, Jodie Whittaker became the first woman and the 13th person to headline the series as the Doctor. And it was announced in 2022 that Shuti Gatwa would be the 14th incarnation of the Doctor, becoming the first black actor to lead the series. Hugh Grant was once approached to play the Doctor, but he turned down the role because he wasn't sure if the newer version of the series would take off. Hugh, come on, babe. Doctor Who is a significant part of British pop culture and has gained a cult following all over the world. It's launched numerous spin-offs in the form of comic books, novels, audio dramas, films, and a few different series. Doctor Who has also made it into the Guinness World Records as the longest-running sci-fi television show in the world and also as the most successful science fiction series ever, judging by overall broadcast ratings, book and DVD sales, and iTunes traffic. The Mandalorian Coming out of light speed to be the next series on this list is The Mandalorian. This space western series was created by Jon Favreau, who had already become a major force behind the camera for Disney and Marvel, and premiered with the launch of the Disney Plus streaming service in November of 2019. This marks the first live-action series in the Star Wars franchise, picking up five years after the events of Return of the Jedi. Pedro Pascal stars as the titular character, a lone bounty hunter who ends up going on the run in the first season to protect what is known as the Child, aka Grogu, aka Baby Yoda. A big part of the success of The Mandalorian is due to the technology that Favreau has taken advantage of, specifically something called Stagecraft, which consists of large LED video screens with digital environments being rendered in real time for actors to perform in front of instead of just pretending in front of a green screen. The series has also been loaded with great directors. 
After years behind the scenes for a number of Star Wars animated series, executive producer Dave Filoni directed the series' first episode, making his live-action directorial debut. And other directors who have worked on the show include Rick Famuyiwa, Deborah Chow, Robert Rodriguez, Bryce Dallas Howard, and Taika Waititi, among others. That's a pretty good list. Plus, Carl Weathers, who plays Grief Karga in the series, has also stepped behind the camera. The series also featured the first live-action appearances of Ahsoka Tano and Bo-Katan from the various Star Wars animated series, and has featured other characters from previous Star Wars media, including, spoiler alert, Luke Skywalker and Boba Fett, with Boba and Ahsoka getting their own spin-off series. The Mandalorian was nominated for a bunch of Primetime Emmy Awards throughout its first two seasons, including Outstanding Drama Series, and has at least two more seasons on the way. The Expanse. Plot, a gravity assist trajectory down to Ganymede. No engine, just thrusters. Mm -hmm. God, oh. Well, Mom said it was gonna be easy. All right, darling, saddle up. Slingshot time. Expanding to the next spot on this list of the best sci-fi TV of all time is The Expanse. This show is based on the series of novels of the same name by James S.A. Corey, which is actually a pen name for authors Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank, who also serve as writers and producers. And every season finale bears the title of the book adapted during that season. The series is set hundreds of years in the future, where humanity has colonized the solar system and Mars has become an independent military power as a group of humans unravel a massive plot that threatens the solar system's fragile state of peace. The pilot episode for The Expanse was screened at Comic-Con in July of 2015 before launching on the Sci-Fi Network in November. After three seasons, Sci-Fi canceled the series in May of 2018, but fans and celebrities alike protested the cancellation until Amazon picked it up for three more seasons. Guys, what the hell just happened? The novel just missed. How the hell did it change course? and the voodoo didn't move. The Arabs did. As with many sci-fi shows, the main spaceship used becomes an important character in its own right, and that's no different here. The name of the ship in this series, Rocinante, is also the name of Don Quixote's horrors from the novel Don Quixote, and also the name of a spaceship in a song by the band Rush. Rock and roll, baby. During its run, The Expanse received a Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation and three Saturn Award nominations for Best Science Fiction Series. And it was nominated for a People's Choice Award for Best Sci-Fi Fantasy Show of 2018, but it lost to Winona Earp. Along with being a huge hit with fans, all six seasons are coming in very fresh on the tomato meter with a critic's consensus that says, The Expanse blends sci-fi elements and detective noir into a visually compelling whole. Battlestar Galactica. Altitude, 99,000, falling like a rock. Launch, launch them all. And by FTL. Clear for launch. Well, this ought to be different. Fighting its way into the next spot on this list is the series Battlestar Galactica. This is a reimagining of the 1970s TV show and was created by Ronald D. Moore, who worked previously on three different Star Trek series and would go on to create the sci-fi series Outlander. The show follows humanity's war with the android race known as the Cylons and bucks the trend of the originals spin on Star Wars in favor of a darker tone and seriously heady twist that strongly resonated with more modern audiences. The cast was led by Edward James Olmos and included people like Trisha Helfer, Grace Park, and Katie Sackhoff, the latter of whom played Starbuck, who was a man in the original. Then there's Richard Hatch, who played Tom Zarek in the new series and Captain Apollo in the original, and he's the only actor to appear in both. Spaceships launching missiles, 40. Correction, 50 plus, inbound. Half targeted on us, half on the fleet. Have AAA target only missiles going towards the fleet. We can handle the hits they can. The original series was canceled after just 24 episodes in 1979, and then brought back for 10 episodes in 1980 after a write-in campaign. Remember writing letters? It used to work. 
The franchise then grew in the form of novels, comic books, a board game, and video games before another crack of the series was attempted in the early 2000s. The pilot for this reimagined version first ran as a two-part, three-hour miniseries in December of 2003, leading to four regular seasons that aired on Sci-Fi before wrapping up in May of 2009. It was followed by a prequel spin-off series that aired for one season in 2010, and a spin-off web series that later aired as a TV movie on Sci-Fi in 2013. During its six-season run, Battlestar Galactica earned a Peabody Award and the Television Critics Association's Award for Program of the Year to go along with 19 Emmy nominations and three wins. Plus, it was named as one of Time Magazine's 100 Best TV Shows of All Time in 2006. The X-Files Mulder, in these files, I found references to experiments that were conducted here in the U.S. by Axis Power scientists who were given amnesty after the war. What kind of experiments? Some kind of tests on humans, but they're referred to as merchandise. But these aren't humans, Scully. From the look of it, I'd say they were aliens. Mysteriously arriving next on this list is The X-Files. The series was created by Chris Carter and revolves around FBI Special Agents Mulder and Scully, played by David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson respectively, who investigate unsolved cases involving paranormal phenomena known as, drumroll please, The X-Files. The original series aired from 1993 to 2002 on Fox and then returned with a six-episode 10th season in early 2016, followed by a 10-episode 11th season in 2018. Fox executives rejected Chris Carter's first pitch for the series, but eventually hired him to do the pilot, on which Carter worked with NYPD Blue producer Daniel Sackheim. The X-Files was inspired by and contains elements from such series as The Twilight Zone, Twin Peaks, and especially Kolchak the Night Stalker from the 1970s. It also drew stylistic inspiration from the documentary The Thin Blue Line and the British TV series Prime Suspect. This is not real. You, you're not real. Mulder, I, I'll prove it, Scully. Prove it. Mulder! Filming for the series took place in Vancouver for the first five seasons, but eventually, as most series do, moved to Los Angeles to accommodate David Duchovny's schedule. And speaking of which, Duchovny was actually looking to focus on feature films at the time this show was casting, but he and his manager liked the script enough that he ended up auditioning and getting the part. And Duchovny, along with Gillian Anderson, both starred in two spin-off films as well, 1998's The X-Files as part of the series continuity and the standalone X-Files I Want to Believe in 2008. The franchise also includes the spin-off series Millennium, which ran for three seasons on Fox from 1996 to 1999, and The Lone Gunman, which ran for one season in 2001 and was also created by Chris Carter alongside some guy named Vince Gilligan. And among the 60-plus Emmy nominations and 16 wins for The X-Files was Gillian Anderson winning for Outstanding Lead Actress to go along with two Best Actress SAG Awards as well. Point is, she's good at acting. Lost. When did you come here? How long ago? 60, 65 days. What was the date? What was the date? September 22nd. It was September 22nd. I think I crashed your plane. Finding its way to the next spot on this list of the best sci-fi TV of all time is the series Lost. With the Tom Hanks film Castaway serving as inspiration, Lost was created by J.J. Abrams, Jeffrey Lieber, and Damon Lindelof, who together wrote the pilot episode and had J.J. direct it. The series, with sci-fi and supernatural elements mixed in, follows the survivors of a commercial airplane that crashes on a strange and unknown island somewhere in the South Pacific. We think. It aired on ABC from September 2004 to May of 2010, lasting six seasons and 121 episodes. Leading a large ensemble cast was Matthew Fox, who played Jack. His character was originally supposed to die in the pilot and be played by Michael Keaton, really? I love that guy. But execs were digging Jack and wanted him to stick around, so Fox got the gig. But because of that huge cast, not to mention the expense of filming on location in Oahu, this was one of the most expensive shows on TV. There was a $14 million price tag on the two-part pilot episode alone, the most expensive in ABC's history at the time. 
please, someone, come. The others, they're... They're dead. It, it killed them. It, it killed them all. Turns out it was worth all that dough, with the first season averaging 16 million viewers per episode. And that was a common theme throughout its run, with the sixth and final season still pulling in 11 million folks a week. Among the many accolades earned over the six fresh seasons of Lost was two of the big ones, an Emmy for Outstanding Drama and a Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Ensemble in a Drama. Plus, the show's cult-like fan base spans worldwide and is still going strong, known to gather at conventions and create all kinds of fan sites and pages. And while the series finale was very <clears throat> polarizing among fans and critics, it is still considered by many in both of those groups to be among the greatest TV series of all time. The Twilight Zone. You're a bad man. You're a very bad man. And you keep thinking bad thoughts about me. Arriving during the golden hour of this list is The Twilight Zone. This anthology series was created and hosted by Rod Serling and ran for five seasons from October of 1959 to June of 1964 on CBS. Each episode had a standalone story with unusual or disturbing events happening to the characters, an experience known as entering the Twilight Zone. And the episodes, which would bring in elements of fantasy and horror at times, would most often end with a moral and perhaps a surprise ending to go along with it. The Twilight Zone had both up-and-coming and established stars featured throughout its run. Names like Carol Burnett, Robert Duvall, Ron Howard, Cloris Leachman, Robert Redford, and yes, William Shatner, to name a very few. The series won two Emmys for outstanding writing and is commonly referred to as one of the greatest series ever, period. It's appeared on the best of all time list throughout the years with outlets like TV Guide and Rolling Stone contributing. And in 2013, the Writers Guild of America ranked it as the third best written TV series ever. Mr. Chambers, don't get on that ship. The rest of the book, to serve men, it's, it's a cookbook. After it was canceled, creator Rod Serling sold his rights to the show to CBS for a modest price. Little did he know that The Twilight Zone was about to enter the syndication uh, zone, where it continues to thrive to this very day with no royalties going to the creator or the estate. The series has been rebooted a number of times, including three seasons in the mid-80s, one season in 2002, and the Jordan Peele hosted and produced version that launched in 2019 and ran for two seasons. But it seems in this case, it's hard to beat the original. A show that, according to the critics' consensus from the 100% certified fresh first season, push the boundaries of what a show can be. Firefly. You and Zoe have been in plenty of situations like this before, right? Many a time. Many a time, you and Zoe. Once we know who it was took us. Zoe and you, together in a tricky... Mal, she's my wife! Huh? What gives you the right to put her in a dangerous situation like this? And finally, shining bright in this last spot on the list is the Fox series Firefly. Created by Joss Whedon five years after he brought us the popular show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Firefly lasted for just one certified fresh season. The space western takes place a few hundred years in the future and follows Nathan Fillion as the captain of a renegade crew that includes Alan Tudyk, Gina Torres, and Morena Baccarin as they embark on galactic missions for profit. We didn't actually plan for this series to run seven seasons, but ultimately Fox thought that it was too dark and pulled the plug after just one outing. However, the story was continued in the 2005 film Serenity, with Whedon and the main cast all returning, which was a hit with fans and critics coming in certified fresh. Mmm, I must see the benefit in getting involved in strangers' troubles without an upfront price negotiated. These people need assistance. The benefit wouldn't necessarily be for you. That's what I'm saying. No one's gonna force you to go, Jane. As has been stated, this job is strictly speculative. Good. Don't know these folks, don't much care to. They're whores. I'm in. Firefly did win an Emmy for special effects in its only season, and the franchise has continued on in comic book form and even a role-playing game. I feel a game night coming on this weekend. The series also lives in DVD form and on streaming, where the episodes are presented in chronological order, unlike the original run on Fox. What the heck, really? 
It has since become one of those shows that always ends up on those canceled too soon listicles with a critics consensus that says Firefly earns its audience's adoration with the help of Nathan Fillion's dry delivery, a detailed fantasy world, and compelling storylines. All right, we did it. Thanks for checking out our list of the best sci-fi TV of all time. If you have thoughts on what else could or should have been on this list, go ahead and just beam them up to us or stay right here at Rotten Tomatoes. Until then, it's time to climb into a black hole and watch a bunch of sci-fi TV episodes, probably about black holes. It's so meta. Thanks for tuning in to RT Essentials. I'm Mark Ellis, and remember, the truth is out there.